And now we move to part five. So just to recap where we are, getting started, what you need and getting connected, we've done that. Once connected, let's understand the hardware. We've done that one. Firmware update and check the Sedona kits. And uh, in part five, we're also gonna just check the Sedona kits again. And number four, part four is how to use CPT to create logics in, in worksheet environments. And part five is making backups and logic libraries. So let's um, go to where we need to be on our screen. Open the ESEO folder, go to CPT, open CPT. And if, um, and what we'll do here, um, I'm just going to create, if we didn't do that in the last one, or if you didn't do it, let's just call the AHU. You don't need to save it, just open. And it opens our application. So first thing we need to do is check our kits. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight icons from light to left to right whenever you hover your mouse in cpt it always tells you what what the icon is so it's kit management click on kit management and just look down we've got common control cpt fg hardware backnet mail sql database and sensor so i'm pretty happy with that i think that covers just about most things we're ever going to need so let's just recap on those libraries that we made and on the logic if you do a right hand click here and go add user lib, there is a Humberto folder with all kinds of things in there. Some of these might not work um, unless you add the appropriate kit. Um, these are just a library I built up over time. But the training examples do work. So we can add a sensor. If you went into that, it would just give you a recap of how we added the sensor in the last part four lesson. If we hit the undo button over here, um, sorry, I've already opened it. Once you open it, the redo undo is not going to work. Okay, so just click on sensor, just delete it manually. Um, the next one is you could add training examples, add the backnet starter. So if you want something that's all pre configured, and if you remember what I said last time, whenever you add backnet, just press save. Go to these AOFG and say action restart, not reboot. And what that does is it just realigns the BACnet MSTP port, which is dependent upon the firmware, or should I say the lower level code. So right and click, arrange them vertically, press save just so it's much nicer. Double click on BACnet. There we have a BACnet service. Go across to the right, look at the properties. So you can see we have. Um, it's true, the IP is true, the MSTP port is true, the default board rate is 9600, and you can do things like BBMD enable and things like that. Um, so what we do here is just double click on that. So now we have a BACnet server, and inside the server we have a number of IO. And these were just taken from, from another application. So all you would do is link your outside air temp to your physical hardware after you've created it. It would be a UI. And uh, let's just try that. So um, let me just give you a recap of what we would do here. So let's go into these AOFG. Let's create a folder called Logic. Logic UI even. Let's add a sensor. Going to cheat this time, we're going to do it quickly. Add a sensor. So we've got a folder in a folder, it doesn't really matter. I perhaps didn't need to add that logic folder. Anyway, we're getting a reading 7868. As I said last time, in reality, it would be connected to the UI, but we're just simulating it. So you can do a link from anywhere. If I just did right and click make link. Now this is correct, I don't need to switch because I'm going from the sensor and I need to find where I'm going to locate the output, or sorry, the, the recipient. So open BACnet service, BACnet server, AVIO, outside air temperature in 16 in BACnet. And that would do the trick, in fact, that would do the trick nicely. Yes, link, close. So if you went back to the BACnet now, to the 
AVIO. See, we have a reading coming in on the outside air temperature. And there's the link. And if you clicked on the object, moved across to the right, looked at the properties, it's coming in on N16. If you looked at links, you will see that it tells you where it's coming from the 10K T3 out into the N16 slot. <clears throat> Just going back again, um, let's add another one. Let's say we were going to add a history SQL. We're going to cover this in, in one of the other parts after this, but again, just showing you how you could quickly add it in. SQL light, there's the chiller. Um, let's say we were going to add, let's rename this to be, um, remember to click on the properties over here. Let's rename this and call this outside air temp. Call it outside air temp here. And then all we would do in the database, don't worry about this because we're going to go through this afterwards. You would go action, update structure, resync, sync structure. And that would reset the table. You can see it came back and said everything's now working fine. So we've got an outside air temperature under the chiller table. Now this needs to receive a value from that sensor input. So again, press make link. Now this time we do need to switch because the outside air temperature history column in the table is a recipient. So press switch. It will remember where it's got to go. We would now go to the logic UI, the sensor, 10K T3 out, OAT in link. And that would start logging. Okay, so that's how you start to get used to just linking things across. Just one more. Let's say we want to add a schedule folder. There's the schedule. Let's say we want this DO to switch on. It's now Saturday on Pacific time. Do I have a schedule set? I do have it set from, this is military time, 0800 to 1900. If I was to change this to be 1200, the relay will go off. And there it did. It just went off and it set off the. If I was to hit the undo button, it will come back on. Okay, now we're going to talk about backups here. Um, what I'm going to deal with here is just a, a normal logic backup since we don't really have any graphics yet. So the graphics are going to be covered in one of the later parts. Um, so let's say we wanted to. Let's say we wanted to save this logic and reuse it. Um, this is particularly useful when you're using the offline tool without a controller. We'll cover that later. But just remember how we do a backup now. Um, let me show you in the folder where the document is that explains this, should you need it. If you go into the user guides, you go into the quick start CPT tool and just go down to this one here, download, upload, backup and restore here. So it's page 21 of 48 um, in that quick start CPT doc 1.5. Let's leave that open and let me just show you what we're going to do. So you go into kit management. This is part of the open standard, so it has to be done this way. We have another way of backing up everything, including the SQL database and graphics. But for just pure logic, this is how you do it. So what we do is we do a backup. Now look where, look, just navigate at this top line where it's come to. That is the folder. If I just click here, you'll see it's on my desktop. So you go to files, recent, AHU, and that's fine. Just hit select folder and that will back it up. Just takes a few seconds. So that's done. What I want you to do now is practice recovering one of our pre-configured applications, just the logic. So let me just navigate where we're going to go here. We're going to go back to the main folder. We're going to go to 46 reference design apps. Just click any of these. Let's click the RTU and press select folder. And what that will do is just go through now and load that in.
So now you will see we've loaded an app directly from a pre-built app. And if you wanted to look at the logic for this app, it also does include graphics. All you would do is navigate back to the main folder, 46, RTU, CPT, Docs. And in here is a document that explains exactly how the app works for a rooftop unit. So RTU control inputs, outputs, occupied, unoccupied, goes through all the theory, everything's in here. And you will notice when we opened File Explorer, <coughs> it was in the Word format. And the reason for that is so that you can edit it. There's the Word format there. So you can reuse these and make these as your submittals. So as you can see, if we open the kits, We've got pretty much the same ones, just added a few more, a few. No, we just don't have the common one in there. Um, if you were to look at the logic, went to easy, you'd see we have set point control. And we could make, we could save some of these. Let's do that. Let's say we want to reuse these again. So I'm going to save set point control. In fact, I'm going to save the whole app. Control, just grab that. Copy. Actually, what I meant was create user lib, which is the same as copy. And I'm going to call this RTU logic folders. And I'm going to put this into our training examples like that. Now what I want you to do is reload back in the one we saved earlier from our class. Just go restore. Now you're going to have to navigate back here. Go to the main folder. Go to CPT, Files, Recent, AHU. That's it. Select that folder. And that will overwrite in Flash everything we just loaded in from that pre-made app. And it will put back in everything we did before. Then what we're going to do is just create ourselves a nice rooftop unit. So you could go through and kind of cut kind of dissect our um, pre-built apps. And uh, let me just remind you where they are again. If you go into the main folder again, 46, you'll see we've got a boiler app, a chiller app, RTU, and a VAV. Just have a look at the VAV, CPT, docs. You've also got another document here with a lot of detail about a VAV air handling unit. By the way, the flowchart there are the graphics. We're not going to cover the graphics backup just yet. We'll do that when we do graphics. But just for the time being, um, when this is finished loading, let me just have a look at the PowerPoint again. Let's just remind us. So I said we're going to make backups. We are making backups, but we're not making full backups. We're making the Sedona Logic backup. So part five is more about dealing with logic libraries. Once we get to part six, we'll be dealing with the graphics, what we call full deploy, and using the FTP client, which is FileZilla. So we'll just wait for that um, to finish. What we'll do is just drop in the RTU, and then you can try this, just drop in the RTU logic from the training examples library. If you remember earlier, I called it, I call it jigsaw programming. Some people might call them composites or something like that. But it's just a way of sa saving time and being able to reuse all that good work that you've done before. So there it goes. It starts quickly. It takes about five seconds. This is live in the controller. What I'm going to do now is delete everything there, not the service folder. It all disappears. Hit save. Just get used to doing this. Must hit save and then do re right click, add user library training example RTU logic folders. Now you can see I'm missing a kit. So what you would do in this instance is you would go back in and add in that kit, the HVAC kit. We've recently changed this so that the loop, the PID loop that's in the HVAC kit is actually in the common kit that we already have loaded. So what I'll be doing is just putting it back in and then you'll find that that will work. The reason we try and minimize the number of kits is there is a limit of 250K. Um, it's part of the open standard, so we can't change it until we fork standard. But anyway, just do that. Try paste it back in again. 
and just get comfortable with going back and forth. And if you're really brave, go go and load in from the restore button down here. Maybe put the chiller app in there, or maybe put in there the um, the boiler app. So that's all for now, and we'll see you in part six.